This episode is brought to you by the Pelora Group. Welcome back to Winning Through Culture. I'm Tim Flanagan. And I'm Amanda Kramer. When culture's not a priority, people aren't a priority. Having an intentional focus helps you as a leader remain impactful and relevant as you move your business forward. Welcome to Winning Through Culture. Amanda, it is great to be with you today again on another episode of Winning Through Culture. Today, we're going to unpack our experience at the Purpose Summit in Charlotte, North Carolina in May of 2024. Uh, It was a wonderful experience, I would say for myself, even better than I had imagined it might be. So we'll talk a little bit about what the Purpose Summit is and what our experience was there and kind of maybe do a setup for what we intend to do in the second half of 2024 with Winning Through Culture as a result of that experience. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And you said going to the summit exceeded your expectations. And for me, I honestly went with no expectations. I really tried to walk in with a blank slate. And I know we were joking before we started recording, but I literally have like pages and pages of notes. So to be able to digest the information and then share that, basically the key takeaways that we had, all of the wonderful speakers, I think will be really impactful for those that have been listening along with Winning Through Culture. And I'm really excited for the guest speakers that we're lining up as part of this series that we are calling How Purpose Informs Culture. And I think the Purpose Summit is a great place to start. So for you, Tim, I mean, it was an invitation from you for me to go and and be your partner at this particular summit. How did this summit kind of come to fruition or come into your life? And then what were you thinking about as a business leader, entrepreneur, as you were thinking of attending the summit this year? Yeah. So I got a chance at my C12 group. Yes, it was in March. The founder of the Purpose Summit, Davin. Davin, who we're going to have on, right? We're going to have him as a guest speaker to talk about his creation methodology for the summit. Davin was a guest at our C12 group in March, and he was sharing with us, and Tony Tenero, who leads our C12 group, was sharing with us that they were hosting the Purpose Summit in Charlotte, North Carolina. It had been started back in early COVID up in Michigan and then did a two-year stint at uh, Notre Dame and was coming to Charlotte. When I met Davin, first off, he was a guy from South Philadelphia, so I got a little bit of a connection to my uh, Philly days to Davin and just was really caught up in his enthusiasm for the work that he does, which is uh, Purpose Summit, is a part of that work. So the Purpose Summit itself brings together a number of speakers from literally all over the world on the topic of purpose in the workplace and how creating a purposeful workplace and connecting one's individual purpose with the business purpose can really create a super strong force in business and in people's lives. So I did think that it would be a good thing for you and I to go to together. We actually, the podcast was one of the sponsors, Winning Through Culture was. We went wearing our Pelora Group name tags. And ultimately, as I said, the experience really, to your point, I I had some expectations, but they were significantly exceeded rather quickly. And we'll talk about why. But that was, you know, it was really just an opportunity that sounded pretty interesting, sounded aligned with some of the work we're doing both in our our day job at the Plora Group and with the podcast, which is also our day job. And I felt like it made sense to go together and get some inspiration and some ideas and meet some new people. Agreed. And I was thankful that you brought it because one of those things is oftentimes you get in your lane and you're doing your thing and we'll have a whole podcast episode about autopilot. And I think we're a little bit in autopilot and the summit was a nice step away from that, really being in a room with so many other individuals. And as you said, across the country, across the world, who are focused on connecting purpose, people and performance. And so looking at it from both lenses of as a business owner, as a leader, but also as for me, putting an employee hat on, right? I am constantly trying to enhance the 
purpose that I'm bringing to the organization. So that was a really cool lens for me as well. So not as just a leader, but also being on the receiving side of that was really neat. So it was a a unique experience. And I know I shared a little bit earlier, I had no expectations going into it and it far exceeded anything I think I even thought it might be. So I'm really excited to have this reflection time around what we took away from it. And then also dive a little bit deeper into some of the guest speakers that we felt were really impactful, kind of aha moments for us that we're now going to have them featured on the podcast. So Tim, you shared with me one of the stats that we heard, we both kind of went, whoa, in our seats about and talking through how employees or specifically just people. So I know many of us work with employees, contractors, vendors, all the things. So keeping this as a line of just an individual who does work in an industry, you have a really interesting stat that I think we should revisit. Yes. And that stat, which I believe is from the Gallup organization, was given to us by one of the wonderful presenters who really did a fantastic job. He is the former CEO of WD-40. So you would think, wow, WD-40, what's that? (laughs) Why would somebody who was a CEO of WD-40 be one of the speakers? But Gary Ridge, who led WD-40 for a number of years, learned as a company is very much about purpose, even though the product they make is something most people have used in their household. The entire business is run very intentionally around purpose. And the stat that Gary shared that really kind of, and I think people have heard some variation of this statistic over the years, Amanda, and I know the number seems to keep growing, but it was that 84% of people at work are disengaged. And Gary's point is they are denied the chance to be inspired and to do their best work and have their best life as a result of that lack of engagement. And so Gary, in his new role with WD-40 as chairman emeritus and uh, founder of a company called HeartCount, is all about helping companies become very purposeful and creating an environment that people want to show up in, perform at a high level in, because again, this isn't just about people feeling good at work. It's about people doing really well and thriving at work. And then also as a result of that, thriving in life. So that was a stat that really jumped out at me is, hey, wait a minute. And I'm looking at my notes from the Purpose Summit. And it was at that moment that I said, talk to Amanda about podcast series on the topic of purpose. (laughs) So... (laughs) So here we are. Here we are. (laughs) And I think we determined this is not a three-part series, but it could be really the second half of 2024. There's that much content. And you very aptly categorize this into three different ways of looking at it. The purpose from a leadership perspective, purpose from Mm -hmm. self being spiritual perspective, and then from the business. And although the Purpose Summit itself was not a religious experience in the sense that it was a platform for faith-based conversations. There certainly were a lot of them. And I think that was the other thing that was also very interesting to me is that it's not built around that concept, but that led through in many of the presenters' comments. I would just say I would concur. And The stat that you said, and when I heard it too, we were sitting at a table together and I literally, like I sat back in my seat and I was like, whoa. So I needed to think about that both as an employee, put my employee hat on, and then also as a leader who is in the business of making that community. So TPG, as we've talked about so many times before, we use the real experiences that we have on a daily basis to inform what we talk about here on the podcast. And so when I was thinking through that, I was like, all right, so if there are 80% or more, let's call it, employees are disengaged or actively disengaged at work, what does that mean for the experience that we're providing? And what is that failure point? So if I'm dissecting that stat a little bit more, I really feel and have done a little bit of research. And most of it has come from the fact that employee engagement is widely concerned or considered as an HR thing. And I'm putting that in air quotes because that is where that failure point is, is when not everybody part of the organization, part of the leadership team is seeing that engagement 
whether it's employee engagement, if that's the term you're using, or vendor engagement, or contract work, or whatever that term is, that engagement is not a one person or a one department thing. It cannot work. And that is the lens in which we utilize every day because it's an everybody topic. It takes every single person to make sure the three things that people want are being met in an organization. And those three things, and this also coming from some of that content from Gary, is that people want to feel like they belong. People want to know that they matter and the work that they're doing matters. And then ultimately that they have a choice in how their trajectory pans out. And so if we're able to do those three things, that takes every single person that is part of your organization to make that a reality. Yeah, and he wrapped that around his four pillars of care, candor, accountability, and responsibility, which I thought, again, around care, one of the interesting ideas that he shared is, you know, everybody should be able to get an A at what they're doing, and it's the responsibility. Again, he talked about not using the word manager, but using the word coach, that if you have people working with you, your job is to coach them to excellence, let them get an A, and not protect your own comfort at the expense of their growth. Uh, I thought that was a pretty powerful statement. His second pillar is candor. You know, no lying, faking, or hiding. Most people don't lie, but lying is driven by fear. Third pillar is accountability, having total clarity in what you expect from people they expect from you and being clear on that and what does an A look like so everybody knows what success looks like. And then responsibility is the fourth pillar. And that is the responsibility equals accountability and ownership. And then something he called the maniac pledge, which I thought was very funny. And the maniac pledge is this, I am responsible for taking action, asking questions, getting answers and making decisions. I will not wait for someone to tell me. If I need to know, I am responsible for asking. I have no right to be offended, and I didn't get this sooner, in quotes. If I'm going to do something others should know about, I'm responsible for telling them. Again, the whole premise of that is we talk about in the podcast some of this stuff, soft stuff. I would say this is not soft stuff in the sense that it's hard, and the reality is that you can't be excellent, you can't unleash an environment where purpose is truly on fire without both caring for people, but also being candid, having accountability and making sure that there's responsibility and ownership. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we both took a lot away from Gary's particular talk from the main stage, but there were so many breakout sessions that were a part of the Purpose Summit and other speakers and just the connectivity with those that were in the room and the energy. And one of the things that I really resonated, and this was happening at one of the tables that I was sitting at on the first day, we were having a conversation around like what you can give away today, right? So not from a standpoint of money or intellect or what have you, but it was really from a place of kindness and then empowerment. So if I'm sitting there as a leader, I'm thinking about how I am successfully onboarding what you just discussed with what Gary's philosophy and wrapping it around those four pillars. But at the end of every day and in in every interaction I have, those are two things that I can give away for free that are propelling that purpose conversation forward. So one of them being kindness and the second of them being empowerment. And I think about that daily, like leaving the Purpose Summit. And I think that's really the cool thing is that what resonated are these small moments, but they come together in a place that, yes, there is an intellectual exercise that you have to to work through to write down your purpose, right? Have it in front of you, revisit it. But it coming from a place of kindness first and being in the people business at the end of the day, I think really helps propel us forward. And that's what we're working to do. And this series, as Tim shared, we're really putting speakers in the lens of, or guest speakers in the lens of, from a leadership standpoint, from a health of your business perspective, and then also from the health of the being, of the human, both as a leader, but also as the different hats that you're wearing in your organization today. Let's maybe take a minute, Amanda, and just talk about a couple of the speakers that really struck you as really powerful and got some great takeaways from. 
Yeah. So many to pick from. I'm going through all of my notes and I'm like, how do I like highlight just a few out of all of them? From the standpoint of the business, there was one person walking away that I was like, I really want to work with her in some way, shape or form. And I said that to you, I was like, how do we get her? Does she work with small businesses? <laughs> because I want her from a consultative standpoint. And that was Rebecca Holmes. And she is, I don't know, like you talked about like lighting a fire in my brain. I was like, it was going so fast. I was trying to keep up. And she has a process that she works through with leaders, with businesses, and it's the SRT process. So it's survive, reset, and thrive. But there was so much that I took away from just the consultative approach to how she helps really plan, not planning for, but being really good predictors and having the opportunity that there are different tensions of purpose that you can leverage because you want to make sure that in your business, and I'm thinking about, again, this is that business lens, that you have your strategy, which is that articulation of how you're chasing value. But at the end of it, you have to acknowledge that purpose without strategy is simply just cheerleading. So I went back to that topic at my round table. We were talking about the things you can give away, kindness and empowerment. So there is a difference between just being a cheerleader and a like, yeah, we can do this. And then there is the concept of being able to successfully build in structure with your team, with your leadership team, with your business to effectively put everyone's purpose to work at work and make sure that you are able to continue to grow as an organization. And she really leaned into the fact that growth is a loop. It's not a line. And that's where the survive, reset, and thrive comes through. So you need to think about it in a circular fashion. And that all the people, their units of your company, they will progress in a different rate inside of the loop. So you really have to have a clear purpose as an organization to successfully manage that timeline and get people to where they need to be. So I just lean into and kind of sit with the fact that it is simply determining the difference between where is the destination that you're headed for? And then what is the direction that will get you to that destination? Did you have anything that you took away from her specifically? Yeah. I mean, there was a lot I took away from her. I mean, I know I think I have six pages of notes. (laughs) Yeah. The thing that struck me again, going back to the comment I made earlier is some of the stuff that the summit was what I would call soft stuff, very inspirational. And some of it was like really hard practical stuff. And I think Rebecca did a very nice job of mixing the two. And she did a nice job of kind of setting up this model of survive, reset, thrive around what had happened with COVID. And I think the thing that I took away, one of the things that has been true in my experience, at least in business, but the kind of the underlying premise is that you need to always be set up for shocks. They got to be built into your business model because there are always going to be shocks in business and in life. So you need to create a steady state of survival and always be prepared. You know, she talked about the four C's of survival. First one is cash flow. Second one is costs. So if you have cash flow, you got your costs under control. The third one is customers. So who are your customer, your client relationships? And then the fourth one was communication. How are you communicating both internally and externally? And, you know, all of that, though, is resting on the foundation of a culture in an organization, which has got to be built to last beyond multiple shocks and business cycles. So she went as far to say that that's the fifth C. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's culture. And again, I think that's the piece that really struck me there. I mean, there's so many practical things I won't try and unpack because we're going to have her as a guest and we'll let her do that. But for any business in today's day and age where things seem to be changing rapidly, and that was one of her points is don't ask, are we on track for plan? Ask what has changed about the situation we're in. So you have that flexibility. I just, there was so much I got from that, you know, that I think is very applicable to our own business that we're responsible for every day. 
and then really the businesses of the financial advisors we support, the things that they're going through. So lots of really good stuff from Rebecca. Yeah. And having her be a guest speaker soon, she's going to talk about the SRT process, but really to put it in a nice little bow is that culturally you need to build an organization that knows how to respond to the external uncertainty that is going to it is going to be at our door time and time again. Everyone loves to say, right? Like change, that's the only thing we can count on. Change is the one thing you can count on. <laughs> so I think that building a culture that is able to, again, as she said, right? You're surviving at times, you're resetting at times, and you're thriving at times. And there are different elements or parts of your business that are going to be at a different point in time with that process. So as a greater leader, knowing where to pull those levers and helping people get through that timeline to get back to a state of surviving, and then you're going to go through it again. So how can you mitigate what that external noise is? Because it is our responsibility to create a culture that can respond to the uncertainty that is ahead. Yeah, that was, uh, again, very strong material. I would say there was like a, uh, literally every single speaker I heard, I got some great material from. There was the first evening after dinner, there was a great speaker who happened to be the chaplain for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, his name is Kent Chevalier. And so Kent told his story about how he became the chaplain for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which was a significant goal of his and really felt that he was called from ministry and leading a church to going into professional sports and bringing the gospel to professional sports. And his story was, for me, extremely inspirational because of all the setbacks he had (laughs) along the way of getting to his goal, which was eventually, again, to become the chaplain for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he had a great saying on his uh, hooded sweatshirt he wore that night, which is, do it afraid. And that was a big part of the premise of his talk. And it was, I also found it powerful because in addition to being there with you, Amanda, I I invited my daughter, Caitlin, who has recently started a business, uh, thinking that it would be a good place for her to go to meet some people and talk a little bit about her business, which is in coaching and communications. And I looked at her afterwards and told her, I said, you know, that is probably the overarching mantra of a new business owner is do it afraid because <laughs> there's so many things you're not sure how are going to turn out you're fearful of and they may fail and, but you got to stay true to the purpose of why you started your business in the first place and why you are all about what you're trying to accomplish in that business and often you're going to end up having to do it afraid so he was another really powerful speaker again i would put more on the inspirational side and that spiritual being side Well, and speaking of that, there was, I think, thematically through all of the speakers, and we tried to divide and conquer. You went to different breakout sessions than I did at times. We, of course, had the main stage sessions together, but there was this very underlying current of gratitude. And I heard that, and I think at least 90% of the speakers. And I read something recently that basically said that if you can begin and finish your days with thoughts of gratitude, then you'll find yourself living from a place of abundance rather than lacking. And I have been sitting with that because there was one particular speaker who gave this concept, and I believe it was John Gordon, and he talked about sometimes we have to be stressed or inconvenienced to let somebody else be blessed. And I'm tying that to gratitude in the sense that I need to sit in a gratitude walk. And that sounds silly to say sit in it, but like you do it internally, right? So as a being on a daily basis to make sure that I'm able to A, give the best version of myself, not only for the growth path that I want and that I see forward for the business, for myself and for those around me. But at the end of the day, if I'm very convicted in the purpose that I have, and I'm saying this as a leader, If I'm very convicted in the person that I have, then I'm able to encourage or empower, going back to what I said earlier for my roundtable, one person at a time, every single engagement that I have with them. And so thinking through like how you're starting your day, how you're ending your day, if you can sit in your gratitude. So 
pick a journal. And I know, Tim, you do this, but pick a journal, do it on your phone, iPad, voice message. I don't care how you do it. But if you can start and end your day with a gratitude walk or writing it down, however you need to process that information, I do think that that really leans into you continuing to fine tune the purpose that you're bringing every day to not only the business, but also those that you you love and care for most. And that was just something that I've been sitting with since the Purpose Summit as well. Like, How do we effectively do that? And how do we ensure that that time doesn't get consumed by something else. So we also have an individual that I work with a coach as part of his team. You work with Rob. We've had Rob McKinnon on as a guest. Previously, he's going to come back as part of this series and talk about the purpose in understanding role versus identity. But he has a illustration, I'll call it, where he talks about the thoughts that you have. So imagine that all the thoughts are on a conveyor belt. All day long, you have all of these thoughts and you can walk up to them and decide to pick them up and hold the weight that they carry, or you can decide to leave them on the conveyor belt and let them go. And so when you intentionally take the time, and this is what I was taking from many of the the speakers, if you intentionally take the time to have the thoughts and look at them through a gratitude, through a, is this serving me? then you have the ability to carry the weight that is meant for you and to then empower those that are around you without taking on too much. And that is just kind of putting that in a nice little illustration. So every time you have a thought, okay, cool. Is this something that serves me? Great, I'm going to pick it up. Or it's something I'm going to leave on the conveyor belt and let it go right on past. Then it might come back around on the conveyor belt. You never know. (laughs) It might. It might. It absolutely might. Yeah. But it was that thing, like you need to talk to yourself, but you don't always have to listen to yourself. Like not all thoughts are, I don't want to say good thoughts, but not all thoughts are helpful. Yeah. Right? No, they're not. (laughs) There's a lot of thoughts that can take you off your purpose. Like going back to my comments about Kent and his do it afraid. So. Oh, so true. There's thoughts of uh, gratitude and abundance and there's thoughts of scarcity and fear. So. Got to lean into the gratitude and abundance. So we obviously came into this podcast more as a conversation specifically about the experience we had. I'm excited to say that the Purpose Summit will be back in Charlotte next year. And when we have Davin on, we'll let him talk a little bit more about that. It'll be in May. Not sure of the location yet, but we'll have some details on that once we get a little bit closer to the date. I've already committed us to attending and sponsoring and look forward to even more great speakers. But as we talked about earlier in this podcast, Amanda, that we both walked away from our experience there saying, you know, this topic of purpose is one that there's a lot you can unpack here. So we're going to spend some time, second half of the year, in Winning Through Culture, really moving through it in a greater depth than we did today. We're just kind of sharing some stories and some inspirations and insights and talking a little bit about some of the folks that we already have committed to being guests and some others that we might get committed to being a guest in a future episode. But it was a great experience. And like all good experiences, important to go back to the notes and also uh, try and relive some of that. So we'll do that in many of our upcoming episodes here. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So from a standpoint of those who have been listening along with us, thank you for being part of the Winning Through Culture community. It really was enlightening to meet some of you as part of the Purpose Summit and then also to have this wonderful series that came as a byproduct of attending the Purpose Summit. And there's so many great guests that are to come as part of this series. And again, we'll be showcasing those in those three areas around being like the leader, leadership in and of itself, the business, the health of the business and how purpose drives that and then the being. So focused on where you are mentally and spiritually as a human. So we all have those connection points and are really looking forward to sharing with you how purpose informs culture. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Winning Through Culture. Until next time, stay intentional, be impactful. Because your culture matters. Matters.